So Victoria spoke there about the Houthis escalating ballistic and drone strategy. So let's get an idea of it if we take a look at the map. For some time now, the Houthis have launched missiles into Saudi Arabia, targeting oil, refineries and other infrastructure. Saudi air defenses shoot most of them down. Now the rebels say they are developing a new generation of drones named after a senior leader, Salah al-Samad, who was killed by the Saudi Emirati coalition three months ago. They've been used in several attacks on Saudi Arabia, the most recent one targeting an oil refinery in Riyadh last week. And then there was the Houthi attack on two Saudi ships and one of the world's most important oil tanker routes. The Saudis say only one ship was lightly damaged, but they've now suspended shipments through that strait as a precaution. As for the apparent Abu Dhabi attack, the Houthis have told Al Jazeera that the armed drone flew 1,500 kilometers to reach the airport. Defense analysts, though, are skeptical, pointing to the UAE's air defense systems, which are some of the most advanced on Earth. Let's speak now to Andres Craig in London. He's an assistant professor at the Defense Studies Department in King's College, London. Always good to talk to you. So let's start there. Are the Houthis actually technically capable of accomplishing this, this any type of attack on the airport in Abu Dhabi? Hi, Rochelle. I mean, yes, I mean, you pointed out already that the distance between, you know, a potential control center of the Houthis in Yemen to the Abu Dhabi airport is around 13 to 1,500 kilometers, depending on um, where you measure. This is a very extensive uh, uh, distance, considering that it has to cross through another country. So Yemen doesn't share a border with, uh, with the UAE, which meant they must have penetrated through either Saudi Arabia, most likely, or, 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 or Oman. And they, should have, they must have been able to do this, uh, completely evading any detection from both the Saudi or the Emirati air defense system and ballista and, and missile defense system. The Summit 3, if you look at it, is quite an extensive drone. This is not a small toy. This is not a quadrocopter as we might know it. Um, so having such a huge vehicle penetrating the airspace quite deeply and then thinking that the air defense system wouldn't issue a warning and pick it up before it actually reaches a critical infrastructure such as Abu Dhabi Airport seems to be very, very unlikely. Also considering that the Houthis really need to have a command and control system to actually command and, and, and control, um, you know, you need, the, you need to have a communication link with that drone that goes over such a long distance. Again, I find it highly unlikely considering where we are. I mean, we've seen drones being used by the so, Houthis. We but, see drones being used by a range of non-state actors. But hold on, if I can get in for... But um, the issue... If I can get in yeah. for just a sec, though, but the but Houthis clearly want, um, want the world to think that they can do this, and the UAE clearly mm. wants the world to think that they cannot do this. So that makes it incredibly challenging... Exactly to actually get to the truth of what's happening. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's impossible to ascertain. So if you look through social media, if you look through uh, you know, the evidence that's out there, so whatever the Houthis provide, have provided as evidence cannot, is, is fake. It's uh, basically, um, these are photoshopped images which, uh, you know, have nothing to do with the reality in Abu Dhabi. So, um, and, the, and equally, the, the UAE haven't done enough to provide evidence that it did not happen uh, or, or a, a, a provide an explanation that somewhat logically, incredibly explains the disruption of flights yesterday. Um, and the thing is, here that the, the UAE are a country that well renowned for false information um, and a country that really is very secretive about what's going on in their country and they have quite a good control over uh, social media domestically so leaks are very very uh, difficult to to come by so both sides have a long track record of, say, of not telling the truth so very difficult to ascertain who's right here um, um, but there is no causal link between a disruption in Abu Dhabi and a claim of the Houthis particularly when we look at the technological ability of the Houthis at the moment when it comes to their drone capability. But it does they have so far flown. Go ahead. Yeah, they have flown. They have flown UAEs domestically, locally, with I would say a range of 100 and 200 kilometers from the command centers. They were mostly used for ISTAR, so intelligence gathering, surveillance, reconnaissance. Some have been used to drop some dump bombs on command centers of the coalition and troops of the coalition, but that is. A completely, it would be a completely different level to use this capability over such a long distance with a targeted strike on Abu Dhabi airport, penetrating one of the most sophisticated uh, uh, defense, air defense systems. Uh, I find it highly unlikely. Okay, Andres Craig joining us live from uh, London, King's College. Thank you.